We are one of 20 sectors in the entire United States Border Patrol. You're going to see the challenge in the environment that our people work daily. You're going to see mountain ranges out here going up to 9,000 feet. You'll see desert floors. You'll see remote crossing areas. You're going to see how our people patrol, whether it's in vehicles, whether it's on horses, whether all-terrain vehicles, whether they're flying in the sky. First of all, I want to welcome you to Tucson Sector. We are one of 20 sectors in the entire United States Border Patrol. Uh, we're a component office of Customs and Border Protection. We're charged with not only border security, but also legal trade and travel. The map that you're seeing out here in front of you is actually the map of the Tucson sector, 262 miles. You're going to see just how remote, how rugged it is. You're going to see just how desolate it is. Many of these people are coming across with little or no water and trying to traverse this desert. They're being lied to and told their destination is just over the next mountain, and it'll actually take them four or five days. But how many people don't make it out of this desert because they're put in a very perilous situation by people who don't care about them? Because at the end of the day, they're a commodity to the smugglers. Whether it's the drugs, uh, whether it's people, they don't care. It's all about money for them. Behind us is a wall that gives a situational awareness of everything going on in Arizona, provides a common operating picture, and a resource list of what we've got available in terms of aircraft to give to our agents out in the field. Mark, this is an impressive room. It looks like a lot of coordination. How do you integrate intelligence here and, and what does that do for your jobs for the mission? So what we try and do is create a common intelligence picture when we've got all the information coming in from all our different agencies, whether it's CVP or ICE or Department of State, we try and bring all that in. Uh, it's not so we can have that information, it's so we can format it, fact check it, and then we want to send it back out to uh, those agencies so that they have a better understanding and a better uh, way to use that information to achieve their mission. This is the command and control room. On my right is the integrated fixed towers. So these are fixed towers um, with radar capability on them and a camera. So the radars would pick up activity and the camera would be slewed around by the operator to detect what that activity is that the radar's picked up and they'll uh, dispatch an agent, whether it be on foot, horse, ATV, or a vehicle. Agent responder also will detect if the activity is even worth responding to, meaning with that technology out there, it's able to dispatch agents in more remote, rugged areas because the technology is taking the place of the deployments of multiple agents. So with that expansion of our assets on the ground, we still need agents to respond to the activity. But the fixed technology is also at the same time seeing much more ground and covering much more ground than an agent on a hilltop with, with binoculars. So these little things the agents call popcorn, they're detection events by the radar. So clicking on that popcorn and saying, hey, it's a group of three, then they need to respond. But also at the same time, the technology is saying there's a group of three with just appears to be carrying nothing. It's a group of three and one of them's armed. It's a group of three and they all have narcotics. So having that technology, giving the agent heads up advance notice saying, hey, you need to send more people than just one or two agents. That, that's huge for us. But also at the same time saying, hey, I got activity over here. It's a cow go do something else because we don't need to respond to cows. The future of border enforcement and border protection, would you say, is heading in the direction of technology or physical barriers? What do you foresee? They, they all have their equal part. So um, even with all the technology put on the ground, we still need the agents to apprehend what the technology sees. So you have to have the manpower to respond to the technology. With the barriers, the barriers are, are great in, in various places. There is uh, train issues that might not allow for that barrier where technology might be a better requirement. But anywhere you put any of these entities, in the end, you still need manpower to respond. So on my left side, or my left side is the remote video surveillance system. So this is a camera system in our urban environment. So we have a lot of cameras in a very narrow area where if we were flat, we'd be able to expand those cameras out. So your, your um, geography is gonna kind of dictate your technology. There's some analytics up here, which are these red boxes. And these red boxes just tell the agents, hey, there's activity in the screen. So they're flashing when there's yes, activity. So, so it's to bring their attention up there and they'll look up and say, hey, there's activity. And they'll bring that, that activity down to their desktop. So what am I looking at here? This is the fence downtown. This is the near east side. So you want to drive it? Can you show you enough? We were in the midst of, OK. We're looking at the border fence and we see what you believe to be suspicious activity. How long do you monitor it before you deploy As, as soon somebody? as it jumps the fence, it's immediately called off for an agent okay. response. Off your 
an immediate agent response, especially in an urban environment, because they only have 60 feet and they'll blend in with traffic, they'll get to a vehicle, um, they'll get between the houses, they have so many opportunities to blend in with the community, so we have an immediate response. So the agents here say one over the fence, wearing black over white or wearing blue jeans or whatever he's wearing, give the best description they can, and then they try to follow his path. Without cameras, how much more difficult would the detection responsibility and job be? So without cameras, we would have to have agents on all these hilltops where these camera poles are. Um, as I mentioned, downtown Nogales is compacted. It's very deep canyons and very rugged. So agents sitting on hilltops would not be able to see down into these canyons, see these roads, see the people jump the fence and blend in with the community. So the cameras do that work for them and allow the agents to give the appropriate response and track for the agents. So that way that one or two agents can still remove from the position, someone replaces them while that person works that group if they get beyond where the cameras are and tracks them out. So it, it, it helps tremendously. It allows you to allocate resources. Much better, much yes, better. much better. We use a layered air platform uh, setup. So we've got, you know, the UAS flying at, at a very high altitude. So that's something, it's like a drone, the big drone that we fly. So we use that as a great situational awareness tool to provide uh, interdiction points for our agents out in the field. Then we've got fixed wing and rotary wing aircraft. Have you flown in the Blackhawk before? No, sir, first time. For every tactic that we pick up and we employ on them, they figure it out and they change. Where do you see most of the activity out here? In this area, behind us in the air vac area, south of that, in those Lord mountain Lord. areas. There's, there's a lot of traffic coming up there. And then out the left door right now in those Babo Kavari Mountains, there's a lot of people walking through there. Is that where the rescues are as well? A lot of the rescues happen in those mountains because people just get themselves into a bad spot. Tommy, last year, Border Patrol did, I think with AMO, did about 4,700 different rescues. Hey, Omaha, do you have something? I had anything, Shirley? I'm from Omaha, guys, negative. Whether they're injured, exhausted, out of water, out of food. A lot of these people that are coming across aren't told and don't appreciate just how far they've got to get. I think a lot of them are told that it's only going to be about a day walk. The big things with that mountain chain is that it starts in Mexico. So they get basically a running start on us once they're already at the top. And it can be pretty challenging working in there. For Every tactic that we pick up and we employ on them, they figure it out and they change. Uh, from the clothing they wear to the, the boots that they wear, I mean everything, their tactics change, our tactics change. I, I have to tell you just how immensely proud I am of the work that we do here, the number of rescues uh, that we uh, effect on a daily basis. And we do change people's lives. So I mean, uh, there's a lot to be said for the men and women uh, that have taken that oath of office that are here protecting their communities in their country.